Sportscast. My name is Steve Duffy, and this is Stuff with Duff. I'm very pleased to have as a guest today the president, league governor, and as it says on his business card, chief bottle washer of the Victoria Grizzlies, Lance Black. Lance, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Duff. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Duff, I like it. Uh, Lance, uh, your team, probably the best brand of hockey people won't see. Uh, that's one way of putting it for sure, Steve. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's a pretty uh, spectacular organization as far as the, the hockey roots are concerned. We've had some phenomenal teams, as you know, and you're out there all the time supporting us. And so uh, it's, it's great hockey. You just got to come down to the barn and see it. Yeah, I guess it's the big effort is putting bums in seats. How, why is that so difficult for a team like that? They're, they play so well. I know they were in the West Shore, but there's like <coughs> 70,000 people on the West Shore. Surely you can put a couple of grand in there. Well, and you know, you, you look back, I mean, over the last 20 years, and guys like Jamie Ben, Jordy Ben, most recently Alex Newhook. I mean, when Alex yeah. was here, we had a hard time getting 1,800 fans in the building. Here's a kid that went 16th overall, yep. first round, and uh, it was a spectacular hockey team, probably the best hockey team in Canada, had it not been for you know, injuries and, and uh, I'll, I'll say it again, suspensions. Uh, we probably would have won Canada that year, but, uh, you know, you need luck and you need uh, skill in order to win championships. But we've always had a contender. And as you say, this is the fastest growing community in Western Canada. There is no reason why fans shouldn't come out to the building and enjoy it. It's a good brand of hockey. It's not expensive, as you know. I've seen, you You know, I've, something I've never seen before. You are on TV with ads for the team. Yes. In fact, you're on them. And yes. uh, you're, you're, it looks like you're really trying to push the club, but people just aren't biting. Oh, you know, I don't think Emmy tries harder than the Victoria Grizzlies. I, I think as far as charitable stuff is, is, is uh, concerned, nobody does more in community than Victoria Grizzlies. We partner with so many charities. We raise so much money in the bowl. And, you know, when I first came in nine or ten years ago, it was more or less reconnecting with the community and, and making a difference in the community, thinking that it would, it would transcend back to the organization. It has somewhat, but I'm very disheartened by, by, the, st by the, the people – that we see in the building. We yeah. should have 1,800, 2,000 fans a night. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, there's a game at 60th anniversary. I did, the Grizzlies haven't been around for 60 years. They Even when they were the Salsa, they weren't 60. No, BCHL has been around for 60. Oh, that's why we're doing that. Oh, I, th I, I think Merritt is the, is the team that's been around for 60 years, and yeah. they're underwater right now, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chris Hebb is still the president of the BCHL? Absolutely. And, you know, Chris Hebb has done a marvelous job uh, coming in. Uh, you know, John Grisdale did a great job for years, but, but Chris is a little younger. He's more social savvy, and uh, he, he's done a phenomenal job pushing us forward. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's been a great experience having Chris at the helm. In case you're wondering, Chris Hebb, former UVic yes. Vike, used to be on Sports Page on television, mm -hmm. and now he's the president of BCHL. Uh, but, it is, like I say, it's a very good brand of hockey uh, yes. Like I say, you put people in the NHL. Look at Tyler Bozak. He's hoisted the cup. For sure. And finally, they retired his jersey last season, I think. Finally, we did. Yeah. Uh, he's up there with jo Jamie and Jordy Van and a couple of others. And uh, it's, uh, like I say, a brand of hockey people should come out to see. Well, it's run and gun style. I mean, we, we are famous for that. And, you know, again, the bowl is, is a great venue. You can walk around the rink. There's not a bad seat in the house. You can hear everything that's happening at the bench. Um, you know, kids running around playing. It's, it's, it's a great atmosphere, and the food's fairly decent. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes they shut it down a little early and they run out of food. Uh, that's my complaint, but we'll, we'll lodge that elsewhere, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lineups are really long for the consent. I lined up I for you. half an hour last night for a drink. Well, you know, the sad thing about three that. three goals. Yeah, yeah, the sad thing about that, Steve, is, is a lot of people blame yeah. the Grizzlies for that. That's not us. It's that's got nothing to do with us, right? Hiring. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, times. you know, the, on the good side, we're not underwater. We have a great venue. We have great fans. We've got a great core group of fans. We just need to expand on that. We need people to get to the rink. One thing about the Q Center is it's a smaller rink, like 2,000, 2,500. Yes. It's, it really shows up the speed oh and my the gosh. skill of this. It, you know, it, it's just so fast. And how they play that fast is beyond me. Uh, maybe NHL... Does it, but you don't recognize it because you're sitting so far away off yes. and watching on television, and the speed doesn't make itself apparent like it does in the smaller ring. Well, there's nothing better than standing north to south and watching the play unfold. And in that small venue, you can actually see the puck go in the net in the other end. Go to any other big rink, it's very hard. You have to look at the, the actual replay screen, which leading into the lead replay screen, fortunately in the last couple of years, we've had the, the uh, Jumbotron, yep. and, and that's definitely enhanced the, the experience for us yes. and the fans. Yes, it's uh, something... And it's a way to get to know the players, too, because you do a nice... Uh, For sure. You do some features on the players, and a lot of 
times in the past, a lot of people say, well, they don't connect with the community, but they are now. Absolutely. And, and quick shout to Ty Dibman, who does our graphics, and he runs the Jumbotron. As you, you're there every night, Steve. He does a marvelous job on the Jumbotron. Yeah. Uh, Craig Dibman has been coach and GM for a long time. Long he time. He's had a lot of success with this team. Yeah. So do you see him carrying the team to a championship? Well, that's the goal. I mean, Craig's got a lot of experience. He's a local guy, and, and you know, and... Uh, Scotty Didman, his brother, is with us as well, and ties his son. So the Didman family's, you know, pretty pretty predominant in our organization. And Craig's a good coach. He's uh, he's a player's coach. So they love playing for him. And and the guys like Newhook, you know, in the NHL now, he yeah. talks to kids. He says, "Hey, if you're gonna go play hockey someplace, go play for the Victoria Grizzlies. Great coach and a better president." I remember we'll it was a couple later. of years ago. I think Newhook. <laughs> I slipped that scored. one in quick there for yeah. you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years ago, Newhook, I think, scored the goal of the decade. Yeah, end to end. end, to end. And popped it in. I just couldn't believe it. I think he showed it about four or five times on the replays. The Czech TV showed it. Yes, yeah, bar and, down. And yeah. it was bar none. It was a Connor McDavid style goal. Well, you know, if you were there live, and I was there live, uh, it, it, it was incredible. See it on video was something, but to see it live, it was like those guys weren't moving. He went coast to coast, as Scotty said, and 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 come run and and bar down backhand. It was it was an incredible goal, yeah. but he scored lots of those goals. Like I said, there's nothing like the live experience of hockey to For be sure. there to be there uh seeing it on tv is fine but uh it's on tv but when you're actually at the rink there's nothing quite like it the atmosphere yes you, 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 we can even smell that player sweat sometimes <laughs> in the box i think you smell it more when it's lacrosse for some reason yeah. right there's no ice and it's yeah a little dry out there but for I sure get, i get the privilege often of sitting in what i call the royal box which is either <laughs> the your box or the bob, bob saunders, saunders box and there's a guy who's done a lot for the community as far as well, recreation is concerned. You know, listen, um, I can't say enough about Bob. When I came in to help run the organization, the first guy I reached out to was Bob Saunders. And, you know, we had two boxes full at the time, Bob's box and, and another guy that's been around for a long time, Freddie Jenner. And, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, our first uh, order of business was walk down the strip and see would buy a box. And I think we had seven boxes filled by that night. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was two boxes for a number of years, right? You know, Bob and, and other people in, you know, in the community, Stu Young, again, Stu's at the game every night. He's out there, and, and Bob is buying the team dinner. He's buying, taking the boys bowling. Uh, that The Saunders family, there, there's nobody that's more philanthropic than them, and, and they're family for me, and, and obviously he's our, he's our biggest cheerleader. We take him to the restroom once in a while. He, he, he leads the charge. Yeah. Unfortunately, with COVID, he wasn't able to go in the dressing room, but he'll be back soon, and, yeah. and, and the boys love him. I mean, he's, he's a great... Great oh, and a belated congratulations to Bob. He became a great grandparent <laughs> for the twenty third time yes. yesterday. Twenty three great grandchildren. Well, and we're not sure if that's the right number, but we'll go with that. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that he takes the team out for dinner. Absolutely. He's, he's, for three years, he invited me to come with the team. That, that's right. You've actually been out with yeah. us before, right? Yeah. And uh, I think we gave you a jersey one time when yes. you came for dinner with us. That's right. And a ceremonial yeah. face off. And, and yeah. And before yeah. we go any further, Steve, I just want to say, you know, on behalf of the organization, what you've actually done for us i mean all those years on radio you always always promoted us you always said it's the best game in town and you're a west shore guy and and you know we, we appreciate that obviously all all the all the kudos you've given to us so you know thank you for that well thank you for the thanks uh, okay. I, I grew up playing hockey yeah. i was a leaf fan until the canucks came into the league uh oh sorry scott uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh dave keon george armstrong when yes. George Armstrong was a captain, you were allowed to say chief. Uh, <laughs> now you can't. Uh, yeah. But uh, those were the years. And Lyle Moffat, throw him in there. At Lyle Moffat, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to knock the Royals, but I just don't like no. going downtown. You drive all the way downtown. I had to park a block and a half from the rink. And I don't... This way, you can park right next to the arena here, go in, walk in, see a hockey game. Walk out and be home in 20 minutes. Listen, I, I'll never knock the rules. I actually had a box there for many years, and, you know, Darren Park and I are best friends, and, mm -hmm. you know, they they basically annihilated that uh, whole front office staff. They're all gone, and Devin Mazur's the last guy standing, I think, there. But, you know, they're they're a great organization, and, and Graham Lee runs a, a pretty good ship. Uh, COVID has really hurt them, obviously, yes. like it's hurt us. But, um, you know, they're, they're good people, and, and, you know, I never I never think that they affect us. We're the West Shore. We've got lots of yes. people in West Shore. They're downtown. No. Having said that, it's free parking at the Q Center. It's sixteen dollars a ticket, not twenty six dollars a ticket. You can walk around the building. You can see hockey. You're right on top of the plate. I think that we offer better value, 
But again, I, I don't want to knock the real estate. They've been yeah. around for a while, and they're, they're, they're a great organization. I remember when I first got here, that was when Patty Janelle was coaching the Victoria Cougars. Well, Flim Flon Connection right were, there. And they were uh, playing the new Westminster Bruins, and yes. the, the mayor at the time was, uh, oh. Peter? Uh, Peter, Peter Pollan. <laughs> Thank you. Came I'll down and says, get this team out of here. And uh, <clears throat> Janelle said something very effy to him. Get that Absolutely. blank out of my rink. And uh, I thought, there's a legacy. Well, I was fortunate enough to actually spend a little bit of time in the Flim Flam Bombers dressing with, with the Patty Ganell when, when uh, Bobby Clark and Reggie Leach were there. And I, I heard a lot of F-bombs back then, and that was the late 60s, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's kind of funny when you talk about Patty because I knew Patty when I was a kid, and uh, he was a tough coach. But I'll tell you what, they won a lot of hockey games under Patty. Yeah. I remember Bobby Clark, they, the CBC foolheartedly <laughs> tried that thing with directional mics on the bench. and Yeah. Bobby Clark let go an F-bomb to the referee, and that was the end of that experiment. <laughs> yes. But uh, hockey is very passionate. And it certainly you can is. see it in the, when you're at the rink and you're up close and personal with the guys. You can see that they're into it. They're intense. Yeah. And a lot of chirping. You can hear the chirping. <laughs> uh, like last night, there was chirping going on. But it's an interesting thing to see. Well, you saw a fight last night, which is very unusual in the yeah. BCHL these days, but Con already had enough, and... Uh, he went out with guys. Pretty good fight, actually. And yeah, I, I, I don't mind fighting. I'm, I'm. They were landing some bombs. I'm okay with fighting, you know. Yeah. So it, it, it sets precedents and uh, shows who's who. And uh, yeah, I don't mind fighting. But I, I find it interesting. Adam Eck, he's probably the smallest guy on the ice, it's and the biggest guy on their team was jawing with him. Oh yeah, thinking, well, he's fearless. Heck? He's yeah. fearless. He's got a lot of heart, he's and uh, you know, he's he's the first guy in the bus to help out, and uh, maybe the smallest guy, but he's got the biggest heart, and he hits hard. I'm so glad this year that the teddy bear toss, they scored a goal. Yes. I was able to toss the teddy bear. <laughs> Unfortunately, mine ended up in the opponent's bench, and then one of the players just tossed it into the rink. But uh, it was nice to see. Yeah, there, absolutely. there were a lot of teddy bears last night. Well, there were, you know, for the amount of people in the rink, and again, I'm disappointed. Like, you know, teddy bear toss, I don't know if there's a 1,000 people in the rink last night. There should be 1,500. There was nothing going on in town. Yep. And uh, I, I just sometimes, Steve, I don't get it because – you know, our Friday volunteers night. try so hard, and, yeah. and it's just it's just it's frustrating sometimes, obviously. It is. I never understood it when I worked in radio. I could, yeah. oh, it's the best game nobody ever sees. What's yes. going on? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, there's 70,000 people out in the West Shore. I don't know, tens of thousands. Yeah, all this development sure. going on here. Why aren't there more people going to games? And I well, guess it's, the, it's that uh, entertainment dollar that everybody is so unwilling to part with. Yeah, I guess, you know, we've got, we've got football now, you know, Pacific FC, and obviously they're going for a championship tomorrow, and hopefully yeah. they get that. And, you know, you've got some football, you've got other hockey, obviously, and, and uh, there's a lot of things going on. But still, yeah. there's lots of people in the West Shore, like you said, and, and it, it, should, it should equate back to, you know, pretty good crowds in the building. So, you know, hopefully we get that. Yeah, I want to see some crowds in the building. People, yeah. <laughs> I'm challenging you. Come out to a Grizzlies game, Q Center in Colwood, down at the Wanda Fuca Rec Center. And they playing tonight. Uh, Chilliwack. Chilliwack Chiefs. Yes. How long o'clock. are they going to be called the Chiefs? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was thinking just when you said that, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, before we go a little further, if, if I could just say a couple of quick words about our volunteers and about our ownership group. Yeah. You know, Ron Walchuk, Ron and Linda Walchuk, Donnie Robinson, they, they put their heart and soul into the team. You know, Ron's there every night. He's, he's, uh, he's the light show guy. You know that, right? Yeah. And by the third period, normally the lights are going all over the place because he likes to drink a little red wine during the... <laughs> during the, during the <laughs> no. A <laughs> little bit, right? Say it isn't but, so. Alcohol but, and hockey? But, no. but as Cliff Lacane says, it's the best light show in North America, I'm <laughs> sure, right? <laughs> Somebody gets lit up. <laughs> so, so, but you know, Ron, Ron has put his heart and soul, his, his wallet as well as Donnie. They're, they're, they're there every day. You know, Ron, so Ron and I kind of run the team, I guess, and he writes the checks and he does the, the accounting, that kind of stuff. And, and uh, I'm kind of the promoter. I'm the big idea guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, but he's there every day. Donnie Robinson, I'm, God bless him. Like, he's been in hockey for over 50 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. He gets the room ready. He keeps the boys in line, those types of things. And, and you can't get a better guy than Donnie Robinson. Let's go to our equipment guys. John Smith. Uh, I don't know if there's a better guy in hockey than John Smith. And you know John Smith. Yeah. Like, that guy is incredible. He's there every day. And the stuff he can do, he can, he can put labels on things and do anything. And his support staff with Mac and, and uh, uh, Hutch and, and Bob, those guys. And, you know, over to the dressing room, all the coaches and that kind of stuff. And Heather Clark, our social, you know, person. Uh, she does all the social media. Ty Didman, like uh, on and on we go. There's so many people. Sandy up in the up in the uh, volunteer booth there. You know, it's a family, right? Monty yeah. and, and Noel. I'm just going through names because one thing I always like to do is I like to introduce whenever we're at a, we're at a function. I introduce every one of our volunteers. 
that is the backbone of our organization and, yeah. and it's so important and that's how you you know that that's the lifeline for you right so i've missed a few names but we can't sit here forever and go on obviously but our volunteers i i just thank them so much for what they do i have to ask you lance is there any threat <coughs> of the team leaving greater victoria uh no <coughs> excuse me guys um no um Ron Walchuk, Donnie Robinson would never let that happen. Um, and I, I obviously, you know, I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into the organization. And, and uh, we, we've really worked hard to try and reconnect the community. We've worked hard to put a good product on the ice. And Ron Walchuk would never let go. I, I, I know him. He's one of my best friends. And I don't see that happening. When I used to work in radio, I used to say, come on, people, come out to the games. Or this team's going to end up in Campbell River. Well, there was, you know, there was talk of that obviously four or five years ago, and and uh, but rumors are rumors, and, and you know, Ron, Ron is just proud of what he has, and and uh, obviously he go he dips into his uh, checkbook once in a while with Donnie, and I, I don't see it happening. They just too much passion, right? It's it's I, a, and they're in it for the right reason. That's yeah. the whole thing. They're in it for the right reason. It's not about money. It's about the kids. And I threaten to quit every year. And I walk in, I give my final speech, and there's all these big tears in their eyes, and I walk, oh, God, I'm here for another year, right? Yeah, you know? <laughs> but they are. And fortunately, they are here to stay. Yes. <clears throat> I am very happy of that. And with that, we'll call that a pro- Anything else you'd like to add, Lance? Or? Uh, no, I just, uh, you know, I just uh, hope that we see a few more fans coming in the building. I, I want to thank our sponsors, you know, that uh, yeah. have helped us through thick and thin, you know, our major sponsors, like Slag's been with us for a very long time, and and uh, and now Galaxy Motors is coming in a big way this year. You know, Freddie Jenner down the way, Saunders. I could go through all these names, but but again, you know, the backbone is the volunteers and our sponsors. And uh, you know, I, I I sell some of the advertising, and I uh, I walk down the street and I ask people to come support us again next year. And most of our most of our sponsors, I phone them just they send me the check, right? Because they know what we do in the community. They know yeah. we care deeply about the community. We care deeply about the hockey players. It's about the boys getting to the next level. And of course, one last thing is, you know, the thrust of this organization as it is in the BCHL is to get these kids off to an NCAA Division One scholarship. I mean, some of these kids will end up at the NHL, but, uh, you know, we're trying to get them an education. And that's probably the most important thing for us. And they come to be a better hockey players. But as I tell every parent, if I can make them leave a better citizen than when they came, that's more important to me. Hockey's great. It's a culture, but it might not be their living. But if they can leave a better citizen, become a little more humble, a little more generous, then, then we've done our job. Good stuff. I like that. Okay, Lance, thank you very much thank you, for Steve. opening up about the Grizzlies. And they are playing at the Q Center regularly. Check out the schedule for the BCHL, the Victoria Grizzlies. And uh, with that, we'll call this a wrap. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. And we'll uh, talk to you next time. Thank you.